Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to discuss Vulcan Heavy again. I did not expect to have to discuss Vulcan Heavy ever again. I never particularly wanted to see this three core configuration anytime any, anymore, but people in the comments to the previous Vulcan Heavy video made the point that I neglected the fuel crossfeed option. So yeah, well, that fuel cross, those fuel lines aren't quite right. I tried, somebody had suggested that I should place the boosters in mirror symmetry instead of in regular symmetry in order to get the images right on the thing. But, so this is mirror symmetry, and that doesn't work. And I'll take it off of the clamps and put them on. Uh, still doesn't work. So that is not correct. Another suggestion was to rotate this one so that uh, we could place them one at a time, I guess. But the, I can't actually rotate this one because it rotates about the... I mean, I could it, I could do something horrible. <laughs> uh, I could... Because uh, the attachment point is at that position where it touches the, the decoupler, right? I could always have done something nasty like this business where I'm moving it and even then it's not quite right. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm afraid that it's going to throw something horrible off. So we're going to just deal. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We are here to test the effect of fuel cross feed, which means the boosters feed into the core. And what the effect of that is on the delta V of the system. We see that the core has 1.09 thrust weight ratio after uh, the boosters are done. And that's because I underfueled the upper stage so that that would be true. And uh, basically our thrust weight ratio there is the same as our liftoff thrust weight ratio. And we are carrying a 42 ton payload. That is what we'll test with first. And I'll see how that goes and then work from there. So uh, because this is locked, we're not seeing the full delta V. And we will see how this works. I've pretty much messed up the symmetry now. Oh, let me just get the symmetry back since removing the symmetry has not helped with the image or quite right. Uh, like I said, it's just going to have to be... Like, I would have to make one of the boosters a separate part. I don't understand either. I I could have sworn mirror symmetry would work, but no such luck. All right, so here we go. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. We've got no boosters. I mean, no SRBs, so this is going to be quite leisurely. And launch. Very, very leisurely. But I will admit, um, the general rule that all heavy configurations are horrible is only if there is no fuel crossfeed. If there is fuel crossfeed, which has not yet been done, uh, then the heavy configurations are not necessarily horrible. But the only example of fuel crossfeed during launch that I know of are the Atlas booster feeding into the booster engines from the main tank. Uh, that's technically a fuel crossfeed kind of thing. And then, because there's ultimately two stages, there's a sustainer engine in the center and the booster engines on the side. Oh, I'm turning way too fast. Um, and then there's the shuttle, of course, with the external tank. The shuttle external tank feeding into the SSMEs on the shuttle. Though that, uh, you know, it's still not quite the same thing as this situation. Well, we might be getting actually some body lift out of this because the protocol vector is lower. We've got an angle of attack. If there's any chance of getting body lift, we're doing so. No need to throttle down anything this time. I can unlock the upper tank now. 
Well, the boosters are gonna run out uh, a lot earlier than they did before, of course. Maybe we should have a special designation for heavy versions that actually have crossfeed, like their heavy X or something. Okay, boosters. There's a little bit of residual. No, there isn't. It looked like there was a little bit of residual. Okay, off they go. We're not very far out, to be honest. It'll do. Probably we can get rid of the fairings before we get to the upper stage. We'll do so once we get to space. Alright, fairing set. Just a dummy payload. 42 tons. So yeah, the whole common booster core thing would really, really benefit from fuel crossfeed, but nobody ever ends up doing it. It's just one of those sad things. It's always too complicated and probably too heavy. Except they did it with Atlas. I mean, well, uh, sort of with Atlas. It's not quite the same, but it's... It's close when you think about it. It's amazing how advanced the Atlas rocket was with its balloon tanks, uh, common bulkhead, and the staging system. And separation and ignition. Okay, the game had a little bit of a think there. Delta V-wise, we might have enough for more than this, but then time-wise, we're gonna have to do the whole going up and coming back down deal and I have to pitch up like this again. So, you know, we'll see. Okay, looking pretty good for orbit. Vertical speed, picking up now. Oh, obviously we're on the dropping down portion of the thing. Pitch has been relatively in the same place. Okay... And... okay. Having a positive periapsis is not as close to orbit as it usually is. Uh, <laughs> waiting, waiting. I'll try and get as circular as possible. But it won't be perfectly circular. Okay, okay, okay. At 336 by 310, 176 meters per second left, but pretty good. Actually, that's the least painful launch of Falcon I've done so far. <laughs> so, uh, that, that was nice. I think we could probably keep that. I might actually use this rocket now in the fuel crossfeed configuration. 42 tons, I think that's reasonable yeah yeah maybe maybe it'll get some work that uh, would have otherwise gone to new glen 42 tons is about the same sort of area as far as payload um the problem with falcon heavy is that it's got 27 bloody engines and that creates a ton of lag and uh physics lag I don't know how bad the physics lag is in 1.8, but it's usually been really annoying. So that's why I don't use Falcon Heavy that much, because 27 engines is a pain. But anyway, so there we have it. Fuel cross feed on Vulcan Heavy makes it a lot better. It's still really slow off the pad, but 42 tons sounds a little bit nicer than what I was doing without the fuel cross feed, which is like 32 tons. All right. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.